Good evening, everyone. Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good day. Depending on which part of the world you are in, we are in Bombay right now, and it is incredibly, incredibly warm out here. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, my name is Vikram Shah, and I'm the founder of Vikram Shah Consulting. We're a premier admissions, MBA admissions consulting firm, and we've been doing this since 2009, helping clients get into premier B schools. Um, I love what I do. And I'm actually quite in, excited to do this session today on the Darden interview because it's quite unique. It's different from everything else. Uh, I'm not really going to pitch the business as well. I mean, people who know us know that we have a very, very unique model. Uh, we work on a success fee, and that's always intrigued everyone. But today, I mean, the session is free. Um, I think Darden has been getting so many more applications and um, it's, they've started with an early action round. Some of my clients have already done the early interview. And I was really thinking of how we can add value to this, whether it makes sense to have uh, a real live mock interview happening. But then I think given the format of the Darden interview, unless you really understand it, very difficult to uh, use that as training material, at least the first time, without going through a presentation or a walkthrough of how uh, you should prepare. So let's get straight to it. Um, what makes the Darden interview that unique? And let me just share a presentation with you. And give me a moment to share my screen. There we go. So <clears throat> what makes the Darden interview that unique. So let me tell you, it's just not a typical interview, right? Standard interview, and there have been lots of sessions conducted by this on GNAT Club. Uh, I did a session on this uh, earlier in the year, uh, last admission cycle, on what uh, a typical MBA interview is and how to ace the MBA interview. So for those of you who have attended that, or those of you who have already done some interviews and expecting other in, uh, uh, preparing for the interviews, you would know that typically there are four main parts of an interview that you need to prepare for. One is the icebreaker, which is walk me through your CV or tell me about yourself. <clears throat> then you get the motivational questions. Why MBA? Why Darden? And yes, this is something which will get covered in Why Darden? But, uh, or in the Darden interview. But uh, there's a different feel and flavor to it. Behavioral questions. I think this is one of the most common aspects of standard interviews. What is the greatest accomplishment? Tell me about a time when you failed. Tell me about a time when you were challenged. Tell me about a time when your leadership skills were tested. Uh, and then you have the self-awareness questions, such as what has been your greatest strength? Or how will your colleagues describe you? And yes, the Darden interviews got parts of this, but it essentially boils down to something which is quite unique. And let me just share that with you. The Darden interview essentially is a monologue. And if you're wondering what monologue, they ask you a single question, usually at the start of the interview. Tell me about your life story, or tell me about your story right from the time you were a child to where you are today. And you're free to speak, and that's it. They don't interrupt you. In most cases, they will not interrupt you, especially if you're doing a good job. You're putting things in perspective and um, you're setting a timeline. You're making the, you're involving the interviewer. And uh, another thing that you're seeing a technical, um, don't expect to be interrupted. Yes. So in that sense, when we're talking about monologue, um, it can be quite, it seems to be quite intimidating. You wonder, how do I go on? What are the interviewer thinking about me? Uh, am I doing a good job of it or no? And it can get quite tiring for a candidate as well. But that's what the whole interview is about. And that's what today's session is about. How do you prepare for this and how do you ace this? Obviously, when you're kind of done with the monologue, you move on to other questions like the motivation questions. Why an MBA? Why Darden? How will you contribute the Darden? And essentially, that's it. You're going to cover only these questions. 
And the reason why this interview says, or this interview training session says, the three most important questions, why MBA would not be one of the most important questions. It's the monologue, which is tell me about yourself, why Darden, and how will you contribute to Darden? And if you get these three right, I think you pretty much nailed it. In some cases, you will have candidates or candidates report that they've been asked questions about a team uh, or when they were uh, uh, a question on diversity or something or something such as uh, a behavioral question where someone in the team was not performing or there was conflict in the team or what is the greatest team experience. So tell me about a time when you worked with a diverse team or you were challenged because of diversity. So those are the one-off situations. Yes, you would anyway prepare for such answers, but they're not common. So when we ask clients to prepare, I would say prepare and focus on those top three questions. Your life story, why Darden, and how will you contribute to Darden? Let's get into the monologue. Um, yes, there are various variations of this question. Tell me about your life story. Tell me about yourself, including your family, background, interests, career, etc. So the obvious question is how long should your monologue be? It can, so your entire Darden interview is going to be in the range of about 30 to 45 minutes. If it's a 45 minute interview, you're going to have about 15 minutes in the end for chit chat, for the interviewer answering your questions, um, or maybe with some buffer time as well. If it's a 30 minute interview, then you're going to have about six, seven minutes in the end. But usually interviewers allocate between 30 to 45 minutes for the interview. And your monologue could be anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes. It could even go up to 22 minutes, especially if you're including and leading the interviewer on into why MBA. Excuse me. So what should the structure of your monologue be? Essentially, I would say go back to those four key parts. Background, college activities, professional experience, and what you do outside work. But before you start, because um, I think it's going to be fairly long, rather than just going and telling your story and going one after the other, after the other, after the other, um, it would be good to have some breaks in the interview. So the interviewer himself or herself will know what's coming. And you can share that and set the tone by sharing a structure for the, for the answer. So for example, you could start off by saying, um, that's a great question. Let me first start by walking you through my background, telling you about college life and some of the activities I participated in. Let me walk you through my professional experiences and then share a little bit of what I do outside of work. And this is just a broad structure. You could structure it in your own way if you want. I like to go chronologically if you have another way of doing it, I would enc uh, encourage you to please explore that. This is what's worked for me. This is what's worked for my clients. So we tend to ask them to follow this. So the question is, when you're talking about a background, what should you cover and for how long should you talk? Now, all these are suggestions in terms of time limits. And why a time limit? I'd say obviously, you just don't go into the interview blindly and without practicing. Um, and I think that's the advantage of the garden interview. You know what's coming. It's not like the other interviews where you're not sure of what question is going to be asked and what order it's going to be asked. So here it's entirely up to you. And I think if you practice well and you create a great structure, um, you're going to ace the interview. So the important thing is practice, get your answer right, get your content right. And I'm going to come down to giving you some tips on how to get that content right. The first thing is you draw up a skeleton. What will a skeleton be? So you break it up into the four sections. Roughly, you start with the time. You can say, let me talk about my background for about two minutes. If you have a more interesting background, maybe you can allocate some more time. If you've had any life-changing experiences out there, maybe you want to put those into perspective. And you could spend some more time out there. So this is entirely up to you. Uh, you don't have to... You don't have to uh, say, okay, I'm only going to dedicate a minute to it. Don't worry about it. I think the important thing about the Darden interviews, they want to get a real sense of who you are as a person. They want to see your values, your motivations, your interests. They want to see leadership as well. Um, they're very, very big on teamwork. So you want to bring some of those stories in as well. 
Um, so when you start, keep a rough structure. Say I'm going to dedicate roughly about two minutes. Identify the stories that you would like to talk about. Make a list. From that, rank them. So you already know which stories are more important in case your entire monologue is going to have to work 25 minutes and say, hey, this is too long, what do I do? Start ranking your stories and rank each story within each section as well. Sometimes you can say the same thing in less words. So understand how much content you want to put into that. Um, some of my clients start with in the background by starting about the childhood and where they grew up and the sort of environment they grew up in and how that's influenced them. Uh, so you figure out what works for you. When you come to college, um, it would be good to explain the sort of choices that you've made or the challenges that you face getting into college and why you chose a particular college as well. And if it, some of those qualities resonate with what it doesn't represent, great. How much time should you allocate to the section about college? Entirely up to you again and depending on how active you've been. If you've pretty much not been very active in college, uh, especially as people who've been on chartered accountancy and not had a chance to uh, participate in too many extracurriculars, then you want to kind of limit that. Uh, but you do definitely want to put the chartered accountancy uh, professional course into perspective by sharing how you've grown through that. Uh, so I think allocate your time what, uh, accordingly and I think make a list of the things that you want to talk about. So if your academic grades are great, or if college really changed you as a person and what it taught you, put that in, no problem. If you've been extremely active in the community as well, great. Give the the, the interviewer flavor of what you did. What you did. Again, if there are any life-changing experiences or if there were any great leadership experiences, highlight that. Um, yeah. When we get to the professional section, I think this is where things get a little bit more complicated. And I think this is where uh, the bulk of your answer is going to be. And it's very tempting to just go chronologically and say, yes, in 2017, this is what happened. In 2018, that's what happened. But I think when you're preparing this answer, the first thing you want to do is step back and say, hey, what are my best stories? What are my greatest accomplishments? What are my greatest leadership experiences? And let me see how I can squeeze those in here. And like you're preparing these stories for all your other interviews, prioritize these. So these answers should be the bulk of your content in your professional experience, rather than just doing a CV walkthrough by saying, hey, first I did this, this was my role and responsibilities, this is what I did. To see it, when you go chronologically and you see an opportunity to get one of the greatest stories out, or it falls in, go chronologically, and when you uh, read the interview up to that. So, for example, when you're talking about your experience, and you can say, in 2017, I had one of my greatest, I guess one of my greatest professional challenges when. So what you're doing is, before you get into the story, rather than summarizing at the end of the story, this was one of my greatest experiences, let the interviewer know that this is what they're going to expect in the next few minutes by clearly outlining and setting a um, tone for the answer. So that's something I would encourage. It'll help break the monotony as well. It prepares the interviewer. They know what to expect. And if they know what to expect, if you're saying, this is one of my greatest team experiences, this is one of my experiences where I really worked with a diverse team and I learned a lot about diversity then what you've essentially done is kind of kill the need for that answer. Um, so you plan your stories accordingly. You make a list of the greatest accomplishments, the greatest leadership experiences, things that have really changed you, the impact that you've created at work, if you don't want to miss out on any of that, uh, the greatest team experiences, experiences with diversity, and prioritize those stories. Now, again, if I'm going to go back, how much time can you spend on this? It can be anywhere between 8 to 12, 13 minutes. It's up to, entirely up to you. As long as your entire monologue is between 15 to 22 minutes. Why do you say 15 to 22? Someone with more experience is going to spend more time. Someone who's relatively younger may have a little less professional content, especially for someone who's relatively younger. 
you want to make sure that the professional experience section is longer than your background and extracurriculars. Because you also want to drive home the point that, yes, I do have quality experience, and that's what I'm bringing to the table. It may not be very long, but it is quality. And you go through at least three professional stories out there. And that will help reiterate the point as well. Um, one thing that I notice is that we are very proud to showcase accomplishments. And a lot of candidates want to highlight their accomplishments. And then they put a lot of emphasis on the results that they've achieved, etc. But when you're delivering the answer, speak with humility. Don't speak with a lot of pride, because that's what Darden likes. Um, I know it's great for everyone to want to showcase their strengths and their achievements, but you shouldn't come across as someone who is um, thinks too much of himself. Uh, I've had a client who received that sort of feedback. She was younger. She was highlighting all of her accomplishments. Yes, she was selling herself, but that's one of the feedback that she received. So show humility. And definitely in your answers, make sure that you're, def you're showing teamwork, collaboration, passion, and purpose in everything that you've done. So let those messages come out, either in your stories or in the manner in which you deliver uh, your monologue. So again, 22 minutes, how should you prepare? It is impossible to do the whole thing in one stretch the first time around. Don't even try. It's overwhelming. Break it up into sections. First, do only the beginning. Then do the education section. Then do the professional bit. You can create a draft on paper. And then, uh, after your professional bit, do a quick summary of um, things that you do outside of work and things that engage you. And every, anything else that you may perhaps have missed, and you will update the interview on what's currently happening. And when you're ending the answer, you may end by talking about your need for an MBA, or you can, end, if it's you find a, your answer's too long, you can just end right there as well um, with things that you currently do outside of work. So when you've got all these sections in, you've created a skeleton for each of these. Start recording your voice and playing it back. Why? Because that will tell you the amount of time that you're consuming. When you hear it back, you will say, hey, I'm spending way too much time on this. It's not that important. Or perhaps you might say, hey, listen, this is just too boring. I think I'm spending way too much time on this as well. Let me cut that out. Maybe you find that your stories are too long, or one particular story, instead of being in the range of about two, two and a half minutes, is going up to about four minutes. And will you really be able to hold someone's attention for that long through the story? So those are things that you need to ask yourself. So record your voice, play it back. It's similar like doing an essay edit, except here you're doing an oral edit. And the good thing is, if you do a good job of it, like I've said before, the interviewer perhaps will not interrupt. In a lot of cases, they don't, especially if you articulate yourself, you don't keep it technical, you explain everything. So the way to go about this interview is, imagine you're telling a bedtime story to someone, your entire life story. Think you're talking to a 15-year-old, or maybe even a 10-year-old, or an 8-year-old, and you're really simplifying things, and you're explaining it. And you tell a story in a very engaging manner, so they just don't go to sleep, right? I mean, that's the whole point. You're not trying to put someone to sleep. You're trying to get them involved and excited, like an audio book. And that's what you want to do. You don't need to be overly dramatic as well, right? Um, so the question that I get is, should I memorize my content? 22 minutes of content is really, really difficult to memorize. And when you memorize stuff, uh, it is, I've had clients who memorize things and they panic. Uh, so don't panic, know your content, but don't memorize. And it's okay if you forget the interview don't, doesn't know what's coming, nor do you have to wait for another question. You can just move on to something else and keep talking and talking and talking and talking. And that's it. That's your stage. That's freedom to you. So go about, go out there, make the most of it. When you uh, end the monologue, get into YMBA. So the YMBA is pretty standard like everything else, right? 
So when you come to why Darden, I think this is where you really want to show a passion for the school. And a lot of people, I mean, all of you guys would know, what really distinguishes Darden from a lot of the other B schools is the case study method. And the second thing is the culture and community. So don't make it all academic as well. Talk about everything else, right? Everything else that interests you, link it to your goals, but definitely touch upon these two topics. Um, show a real passion for Darden. Talk about people whom you've spoken with. Clients of mine who applied an early action, I mean, it's very easy for them to say why Darden and just re-emphasize that this I've applied an early action. I'm committed to this school. If I'm offered a place, I will definitely take it up. And it's obvious why Darden. Um, so yes, two things that you must stress on, the case study method, and culture and community. And when you're ending the answer, and I've not created a slide for this because it's quite obvious, and it's anyway something that you would prepare for all other interviews as well. How would you contribute to Dharma? And this is like any other answer about how you contribute to another school. So essentially, I want you to prepare these three answers: the monologue, why Dharma, how will you contribute to Dharma? Yes. The why MBN goals with is pretty standard. Go through my previous uh, videos as well. I've walked you through of how to prepare for those answers. GMAT Club has conducted a couple of uh, live interviews and mock interviews as well, where you can see candidates practice and propose those answers and they've been given real life feedback as well. So that's something else, another resource that you could utilize to prepare the standard MBA interview questions. Question that I often get when it comes to the Darden interview is, uh, should I use notes? Uh, and I say, sure, as long as it doesn't become a distraction for you. So what do I mean by that? Um, I've had clients who literally have kept a script up on the screen and they've gone and they've read it. And it's pretty obvious when your eyes are going from left to right, or you're staring at the screen, you're scrolling down. You want to be in the interview. You want to be in the present. So uh, look at your screen, but don't read off the screen. I don't recommend putting anything on your screen. I would say if you have to put any notes, keep it in a place, in a place where it's easily accessible. It could be on a wall behind you. You can have a large chart with large fonts, just highlighting the flow of things like uh, the, the flow of your story, things that you're going to do and uh, the order in which you're going to talk about. You could also keep some notes on your desk. Uh, I don't have any notes on my desk right now. I find it quite distracting. A lot of my clients also do. If they actually feel it uh, takes them away, it kills the, their presence. So, But some people feel more comfortable. They tend to forget. So they keep a checklist of things. Again, in big fonts, it's easily accessible. It's something that you can read. You don't keep something where you're going to have to fold. You don't keep post-its with very small uh, words. But that's entirely up to you. Before you do it, do a dry run. Try it. See if it works for you. See if it doesn't. So should you use notes? Personal choice. But whatever you do, do not read up the computer screen. Dress code. What should you wear? Obvious. Dress formally. If it doesn't say so, dress formally. If a second year student is interviewing you, it doesn't matter. Dress formally. What does formal dressing mean? Wear a tie. Women wear a jacket. That's pretty much my presentation. And that's how I'm going to walk you through uh, the Darden interview and how to prepare for that. I hope this works. I'm happy to take any questions. And uh, if you have any more questions after this session, feel free to write to me at mba.com or reach out to me via my website or avail of a free consultation, and we're happy to help you. I think Darden's uh, a great school. It's got a uh, great fan following as well. And yes, uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Um, Yes. So if we have to end the session early, that's fine. But um, I think one of the learnings we had from the first round of the interviews, uh, the early action 
round was a client of mine that interviewed that if you are very articulate and you clearly explain things and you didn't go into any technical detail and you anticipated thoughts that the interviewer may have when they are listening to your monologue and their stories and you answer that itself, then most people were not interrupted. I think from all my clients, we have one client who was interrupted. Um, and again, it's not because he was not articulate, it's just that I think the interview had a couple of questions regarding his job. It was quite unique. So if you pretty much follow this, I think you'll be all set for the Darwin interview. It is by far, for me, the easiest interview once you get the monologue right. Uh, you're completely in your own world. You get a chance to talk about anything and everything that you want, anything that sells you. So you don't need to prepare for 100 other questions. You just need to prepare for this. And yes, you will do a general behavioral questions, which are more team oriented at the end of the interview. Um, so, so we're going to wait for a few minutes to see if there are any questions. Otherwise, um, like I said, just reach out to me by email, uh, mba at vikramshah.com or on my website, vikramshahconsulting.com to post a question. So great. I think um, so far so good. I think the presentation didn't be clear. Like I said, and like I said that doing a mock makes it really difficult for someone to understand because everyone's telling their own story. So the important thing is you learn how to structure your story. I hope this training or this session helps you. Uh, I wish you all the best for your Darden interview. If you have any questions, like I said, reach out to me, reach out to alumni, Tom Darden, everyone's really, really helpful. Um, I wish you all the best for the end of round one, last few applications that you're going to send out. And hopefully none of you will have to apply to more schools in round two. But uh, if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much for attending this session. And I wish you all the very best. Thanks so much, guys.